Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Heart for Hire for the third time. I don't know why they keep coming back, but they can say their names, what they do in the band. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? My name is Julie. I sing and I play guitar in Heart for Hire. And what's up, guys? My name is Mike. I play drums. Awesome. So, Mike, you're the newest member, so I guess I, the first question I have to ask is, how did you like find out about the band? How did you join and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, so Julie and I have been friends for years, like, since, like, kids, and we've always, like, kind of, like, we always knew we played music, but it just kind of came together last year that an opportunity came up for me to fill in for their band, and I just, they kept inviting me back, so I just kept coming, and then, next thing you know, I was a member, so. I've wanted Mike to join our band for a pretty long time, so <laughs> once the opportunity arose that we were like in between drummers, I was like, Mike, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So my next thing is, obviously you're coming on because you have something to promote or talk about. Um, you have just released a single entitled Limits, so I know that you had given me a little bit of backstory on it in terms of, you know, the email, but if you wanted to go into it a little bit more, um, I know that you had spoken about it, had been about a previous time in your life. Um, so what what does that song mean to you? And like, you know, what, what do you hope that the audience kind of takes away from it? So um, Limits is our single and our music video is going to come out on March 22nd. Uh, which is a Friday, so hey, hey, Friday. <laughs> um, but essentially what the song Limits is about, it was about a time in my life last year. Um, you know, I was just so consumed with work, school, um, and what little time I had, I just didn't really want to think. So, you know, friends and I just sort of filled that with partying and drinking and things that are far from constructive. Um, and it just, it starts to get out of hand and kind of what the song Limits is about is just that, like knowing your limits and, you know, when things become, you know, it's a few fun nights out to all of a sudden you're filling your excess time uh, only with drinking and you're spending time with people that really only want to do that. Um, and it took a huge toll on me, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically. Um, and it just took a little bit, in, you know, finding that in me and being like, hey, you are, you know, for lack of a better word, pushing your limits and you need to snap back out of this because um, it was just taking a lot away from, you know, things I wanted to accomplish in life. Um, so that's kind of how the lyrics came about for the song. And I used a lot of metaphors in it and it kind of wasn't until I was, all the lyrics were done and looking at it from a big picture perspective that um, I was like, wow, this song is totally about this time in my life last year. Um, when all of this kind of um, unraveled and that is what limits is about and what I hope people to take away from it is that you kind of can find that point where you know it's a limit you can stop it before something becomes a problem or just takes away from you know the bigger picture yeah I, I definitely feel like for me like because I've had obviously a few chances to listen to it I think for me it's like I may not divulge into that sort of stuff but I think for in my perspective is like you know like overworking yourself like when you're when I'm doing so much like I always think like man like I could always do more and like sometimes it's good to have that realization of like okay you're doing a lot maybe you should you know back off a little bit you should take it you know more time on it so you don't you know overwork yourself you don't burden yourself with that sort of responsibility so I appreciate that in that respect obviously um but musically is obviously one of the bigger reasons why uh you know I check over a song and stuff like that so like obviously we had spoke at launch last year about like a musical direction change and I felt like for me you guys pulled more from like an electronics background like I feel like there's a lot more going on I, I think this is probably your best track that you've written so far. Um, like, wh who do you guys delve from now? I know, I don't know if, Mike, you were on the track or not, um, but, like, what were some of, the, like, the musical influences that you guys pulled from in this track? I would say, for me personally, Paris was definitely one of my influences. Um, just, I love the sounds that they use, and... Um, similar direction they were like a rock band that's transitioning into more of the pop genre which is really cool and, and I thought this track was a great transition for us especially you know going from that rock sound to almost transitioning over more towards pop um, and I just thought that was really cool what about you but, I think both, well 
So we actually talked about that. I think the first time you interviewed um, that I was a massive Paris fan. I'm still, I'm still a massive <laughs> Paris fan. Um, but one of the things that uh, Mike and I really uh, are one of our biggest common grounds is our love for a lot of you know bigger pop artists. Mm -hmm. Like we love Halsey, BB oh, Rexa, yeah. yep. uh, Billy Eilish. Um, and you know while we're not going to be necessarily making that exact type of music, there's things in there like we would reference back and forth the pop songs, and we would be like, well, wow, like. You know what if we what if we took like a stop in the song or a break in the song we made it kind of like this um and fusing you know obviously live band instruments um into that kind of mold would help take our sound from this raw type of pop punky alternative rock thing to this you know kind of synth driven uh pop fuel rock songs um and that's something we were really really excited about um it just it carries a lot of the same energy but it just puts so much more ambience into the song um, and I think that's kind of one of the things we were really excited about with Limits. Yeah, initially, like, I was like, okay, maybe I was like, at first I was like, oh, this is a lot of electronics. Like, I know that you guys are influenced by Paris and stuff like that. So I, I was like a little apprehensive about it initially. Um, but like once the chorus kind of came in, I was like, man, everything's like coming together. It, it has that sort of still rock fueled energy to it, but it's also very much, you know, a pop kind of laden track which I, I appreciate from somebody who mainly listens to a lot of heavier music and stuff like that so uh for me that was one of the cooler things that I that I could pick out and and the bridge was like primo stuff I really enjoyed it a lot um but this is this like kind of like more or less a one-off track or are you guys working on a full length I know that we kind of had discussed it before Julie as well but like are you guys in the works of trying to like come up with like an EP or a full length in the in the foreseeable future yeah I think this was like a for just like a traditional period I think we just um, but I think we are planning on doing an EP I believe uh explore. yeah so initially i think the first plan was to like hey let's write a 10 song album and while we would mm -hmm. love to do that um i think taking the time to really work on these singles and that's one of the things that our producer donnie uh did was he was really good about um let's not churn out 10 songs as right. quick as we can because i think in the past with our previous records it was like let's churn out these songs as quickly as we can and hope they come out good um and while we're still super proud of the records we've done, this was, I mean, this single was months in the making. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like the bridge, you said that you really liked um, a lot of that too. Donnie Ingram, who's at Dreamcatcher Studio in Baltimore, really helped us like craft that sound. Um, so I think, you know, going forward with that, we'll be doing, we'll be doing a few more singles. You can expect new stuff coming after Limits pretty soon. Um, and then I think that'll kind of gradually, we'll figure out if it's more the EP or album yeah. track do you find that like I, I know that they had kind of a panel at launch and I, I hate to keep referring to it but um I, I found that like a lot of the things were like bands and like and artists in general focus more on that like single avenue so do you feel like that's more of a a thing for you guys that you'll be punching out more like singles and things of that nature as opposed to maybe like an EP or an album every every once in a while yeah, I definitely like the single, like releasing singles. Um, I think it's just in today's music industry, people definitely, I don't know. I mean, people still buy albums, but it's not as much anymore. It's definitely more, you know, for me, when I hear a band or I'm going down on their Spotify and just listening to one or two songs, and that's usually how, you know, I will determine whether I like listen to that band's even more of their stuff. But definitely, um Definitely, I like the single route. I just think it's just the way the industry is going nowadays. I think if you wanted to add something to that, but the single one of the yeah. things that like there are bands that they put out albums and every album they touch is just gold. Um, That's true. One yeah. of the bands that I I really admired for how they're playing the singles game is uh, the band Camino. Um, they've put out I don't know six or seven singles in the last year year and a half, and they've all sounded amazing and they're also different from each other but they fit this bigger picture and i think singles really gives you that chance to experiment with different sounds um so that's kind of one of the things i like yeah. like the one we're working on next um which uh in, ideally is going to come after limits uh is going to have a similar vibe um but we're going to play with some different sounds and some different styles um and really just give listeners like kind of you know a big dynamic range as to what we're doing yeah, and I think I appreciate that as a listener, just 
from you know listening to you early on and you doing stuff till very much now i feel like there's a progression and you know as as somebody who not only like reviews music but also listens to a ton of music in my spare time i think it's cool to see like the arc of an artist and uh, i absolutely agree with like the single thing as much as you know i'd love to keep buying records and stuff like that i feel like a lot of times now it's going to be like you know how often could you get it out like how often can you kind of keep this sort of like popularity of of what you do and so you know i appreciate the route of doing that and uh i hope that you guys kind of find good success in putting out the singles and stuff like that i'm excited for people to check out limits when it comes out but you know when you come on audio addiction i have some fun questions to ask because it's it's it wouldn't be an audio addiction interview if i didn't ask some so um one of the fun ones that i've been asking recently have been some what are some of your uh, guilty pleasure bands people that might may or may not know about your music but may like find bands that you might find interesting Mike, I want to hear your answer first. Oh man, <laughs> everyone's gonna know mine. Like anyone watching yeah. this, like when as soon as I open my mouth, they're gonna know what I'm gonna say. But I want to hear Mike first. I I'm a huge Justin Bieber fan. <laughs> oh okay okay and, yeah, yeah especially his uh, his most recent album. Uh, I say I'm a fan. I can't even think of the name of it right now. <laughs> What's his most recent? Wow. Was that the purpose? That's it. Pur- the purpose. <laughs> purpose. Yeah. Wow. I don't even know. What. Yeah, no, that was a great album. Um, so yeah, that would be definitely one of my favorites on a guilty pleasure standpoint. Um, yeah. For all those watching in 2019, <laughs> the Jonas Brothers announced the reunion, and that is my biggest guilty pleasure. Um, everyone of my friends has been tagging me in anything to do with the Jonas Brothers reunion because I was a giant Jonas Brothers fangirl when I was. <laughs> when i was 13. um i saw a lot of throwbacks on facebook oh my god yes <laughs> was absolutely uh, i am <laughs> i like i am so excited about the jonas brothers reunion i mean it's a guilty pleasure but I'm, i don't i'm not guilty about <laughs> right. it the slightest. like all my friends are just like the, the last thing they expect from a girl who's like constantly wearing black and like listening to darker music is for me to be excited about the jonas brothers but you know here we it's 2019 it's a new age it's a uh, heart for hire and jonas brothers tour coming to a city near you kind of vibe that's what I'm <laughs> yeah wondering. if anyone has a booking contact on how heart for hire can open for the jonas brothers just you know email heart for hire band at gmail.com um we will provide you with all the necessary info <laughs> awesome awesome well my next question is um what are some bands that you've been jamming? I know I kind of alluded to it earlier, and I always love asking that question because I feel like over time people's musical tastes change a little bit here and there. So who have you guys been jamming? So I actually I actually listen to a lot of country music. So Thomas oh. Rhett, oh. Kane Brown, <laughs> uh, Dan <laughs> Shea, yeah, Florida Georgia Line, all those, all those guys. Yep. I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that probably throws like some people off like it's like really I'm like yeah yeah it was just and it was like a recent thing too definitely within like the past six months <laughs> that's awesome yeah i can get with it i can get with it um i've been a giant halsey fangirl for a long time um she's like one of my favorites um going back to the band camino they're another one that i really really love listening to um I'm also really into uh, Bad Sons. They're super good. Yeah. Um, Copeland just released a new record. If you guys, if you guys are into Copeland, they just released a new record, and I'm I'm all about that stuff. So I bounce back and forth between the super like mainstream pop, indie pop, and then you know just to like bands from the early 2000s that are still doing it. Um, that's kind of that's kind of what has been on on my rotation as of as of late. Awesome, awesome. Well, speaking about being in that 2000s era, I know that you saw a post, I'm sure, about the Warp Tour 25-year anniversary thing. Are you guys planning on going to? What do you think about the lineup? Do you think do you think it's well worth the drive to Atlantic City, or, or are you guys uh, maybe skipping out on this one? Did we ever talk about if we were going to go? I, well, I saw, I saw the lineup. I thought it was a great lineup, personally. Um, I was pretty stoked on the lineup. Yeah. They they have like a lot of new wave artists, but they mm-hmm. have a lot of Warp Tour veterans. And I think like as far as like a lot of the ones that like Warp Tour is about fusing those two, like who's hot right now, who are some of the the, the pioneers in this sort of scene. Um, 
but it's cool because it, for the date that's you know most feasible for us to attend is the Atlantic City date, which mm-hmm. is two days on the yeah. beach in Atlantic <laughs> yeah. City. That's awesome. Um, you can imagine what kind of a uh, drinking fest that is going to be. <laughs> um, there are going to be a lot of dads in sunburnt, uh, <laughs> in sunburnt, in tank tops and flip flops. Oh, absolutely. And there's also going to be a lot of kids. Um, so I think it's going to be a very interesting mixed crowd. But I'm really excited. I think some of those names on the lineup are really, really awesome. So I don't yeah. know, Mike. Are we going to go and crush Bud Light Limes at Atlantic I th- City? <laughs> I think. Is that a question? I think that's the. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go do some of that. So yeah, you'll definitely catch us there. Um, but I was very excited. I mean, I'm sad to see the tour go. We get, we were fortunate enough to be able to play yeah. the Columbia date um, last year on the tour, which was, um, that was a dream come true. We were like, when they announced it was the last tour, I was, we were at practice one day and I was saying to the guys, yeah. I was like, one way or another, I'm getting us to play. <laughs> um, I, I actually like, remember that. That was yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, "Don't worry, don't worry, guys. I'll figure it out. I'll figure <laughs> it out." So you know, we contacted as many submission people and publications and different sponsors and companies um, to try and make it happen. Um, and we were lucky enough that we got selected to play a set. Um, so that was huge for us. We were so thankful for that. That was a really fun day. Oh, oh gosh, that was so much day. fun. Yeah, I think you got sunburned. Like, I did. I got. I got. Yeah, we can finish. Hard. My sunburn. Solid eleven out of ten. Um, <laughs> this one and me not friends. You were just so wiped by the end of the day. And yeah. With everything going on, playing, walking around, and then just masses amounts of sunburn. Um, it was a day. Yeah, it was a full day for me. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna say if you're not wiped out by the end of Warp Tour, I feel like you didn't have a good time. So if you're not if you're not feeling That's like true. shit afterwards, I feel like that it wasn't a good day for you. So uh, I I definitely agree with that. Like I'm excited to see it. I think. A day to remember like blink 182 like oh, yeah. those are all gonna be like huge bands that i'm excited to see because unfortunately i think the last time blink and a day to remember were together like they had a hurricane and they canceled the event so it's gonna be a redemption hopefully fingers crossed that doesn't happen again but uh definitely excited to see that so i wanted to ke- get your thoughts on it anyway but another fun musical question uh if there was one album that you could claim as your own work uh what album would it be Oh, that's a good one. Wow. I would I would have to say it is an older one, uh American Idiot from 2004. I absolutely love that album by Green Day. Probably one of my favorites, probably my top 5. Um that would definitely be mine. Awesome, Julie. Um if there was one album that I could claim as my own that's tough. Pro- I'm gonna go back to it. I think every time I interview with you, I usually mention one artist like six times. It would probably be Badlands. From- <laughs> yeah, okay. If I, if I could that claim Badlands yep. as my own, like that was just such like a fearless, badass record. Yeah. The whole concept of it was so cool, and her writing style is amazing. And you know how we are. We like to keep like our songs a little bit darker in yep. tonality and nature. And that whole album had a lot of dark elements to it. Um, but it was a pop record, so yeah. If I could claim that. I think I'd play in Badlands. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Bucks, that's for sure. Yeah, we'd be making a few bucks. Halsey <laughs> would... did a great job. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> Feature on a track, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me uh, dig deep into my bank account to make that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. How am I broke? Two seconds. You're Next well question, it. guys. Another fun one as well. If you guys could co- concoct a musical supergroup, who would be in your band? Ooh. That's another good one. Um, hmm. Well, I'm gonna go back to Justin Bieber. i um, not him, but I would take his drummer, Dick Taylor, uh, oh, Davon yeah. Taylor. He's not. He would be my drummer. Yeah, yeah, he would be my drummer for sure. Um, who else? Well, you know what? I'm gonna just take his whole backing band. If that's a wild, <laughs> honestly, he's a great backing band. Honestly, so. Yeah, I would, maybe. Honestly, like I would probably the two vocalists I probably think about stealing for a supergroup would be um would be the guy from um 
the guy from Walk the Moon. I don't know his name, but I oh, love his vocal style. Yeah, yeah. I love his vocal style. Everyone's like, oh, I used to listen to yep. Walk the Moon way back in the day. I'm like, they're freaking crazy. And he's got like they crazy great good songs energy. now. Yeah. Yeah. Walk the Moon on vocals. Um, that would be super, super cool vibe. Um, is there anyone for like a guitar player that I could think of? I oh, know, but I do love how like I resorted to a drummer first and you resorted to a vocalist first. I yeah, it's I think it's funny. just like We're natural. Just, like, yeah, yeah. Play, like, yeah, right. who we would want like who would i want to replace me right exactly um, that's what i yeah maybe i'll yeah. just like like we get do from walk the moon because he's got such a good playlist you know <laughs> then i'll just like step back and i'll focus on guitar because i mean i need to tighten up guitar yeah. anyways so like why don't i just do that yeah there we go you play piano right oh a little bit i was gonna figure <laughs> out like more of the uh <laughs> the monitor <laughs> part like, yeah, like, learn how to run, yeah run monitors that would be something you uh, always ask really good questions, yeah. Brandon. Yeah, so, like, like, I, like, I, I actually yeah. have to think. It's not just like, oh, right. what's your, when's your single coming out? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the lead singer of Walk the Moon is Nicholas Patrika. I don't even know if I pronunciated that right because I'm terrible at that. But Nick, you're a good vocalist, so there you go. Maybe it might happen now. Shout out. Shout out <laughs> to him. Yeah. So I Why have don't we some... have Halsey? Now? What were you going to say? Oh, Halsey? I knew that was going to be. I told you like five times like, I mentioned <laughs> yeah, right. every interview. It's only fair. Hey, listen, I'm about that. That's I I can expect that from Julie, it, uh, you know, just for Heart for Hire in general. I can expect those types of answers from your band. So, um, But anyway, I've been asking this new thing. It's a this or that. I'm sure many interviewers do this, but I always like asking them anyway. Um, so it's pick one of those things and we'll go from there. So um, first one. Live or studio? Live. Live. Yeah, 100% live. live. Awesome, awesome. Stage presence or an interactive crowd? Interactive crowd, I'd say. Interactive crowd probably contributes to stage presence. That's true, yeah. yeah. You gotta have presence everywhere, but when, like, some of the shows we played, when we just have a crazy crowd, it's, that's, it's the it, best. It just builds it's your the stage best presence, yeah, ever. yeah. It's the best feeling ever, and it shows in your performance then. Um, awesome. but yeah. Awesome. Books or movies? Movies. Movies. <laughs> Can't remember the last time I read a book. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta movies. ask that because you never know. Somebody picks a book over a movie sometimes. Uh, but my next one is CD or vinyl? Vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah. 100%. Vinyl. I pulled out my vinyl collection the other day. I had a friend I was staying over. And we were just jamming vinyl records. I was like, I forgot how much I enjoy these. <laughs> Same. It's more Definitely. effort to it than just like, oh, put it on the queue. Yeah, like, exactly. It's yeah. just more effort. <laughs> but I think you that's know, a part of the fun, though. Ball. You know, I feel like that's like yeah, an, added, an added bonus that you get to like physically hold it. I don't know. I'm a big like artwork fan, so I always love seeing like the larger artwork on on a on a vinyl. So definitely about that. But another fun one. And we'll do go- it. Oh, go ahead, Julie. No, no, I was just saying, like, they'll do it differently, too, and make different inserts and stuff. So there's something to be said about, you know, vinyl being a lot different, both visually and audibly. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Look at me for grammar. I I have a college degree, I promise you. (laughs) So do I. So anyway, guys, another fun one. Got to throw it back with the emo classics. My Chemical Romance or The Used? Oh, I'd say The Used. That's me personally. I like The Used. I'd have to go with my chemical yeah. romance. I'd, I'd have to. Oh, okay. Okay, we're split. I like I that. Do love the use. I do love the use. Um, my friends and I have emo night in our apartment probably. <laughs> like two nights a year, we'll just be up until 3 a.m. like screaming emo. And I know our, you know, all the all, all the emo hits. And I know our neighbors hate us. <laughs> awesome. I'm Next at my mom's one. house right now. We don't do that here, but we do that in Philly. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Well, you have to invite me the next time so I can have some emo, emo oh, bangers course, going there. <laughs> awesome. Next one, got to throw a bag with some child stuff. So, Disney or Universal? Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney. Ooh, ooh. Okay. And then the last one, pizza or sushi? Sushi. Pizza, because I can't eat sushi. I, I like sushi, but I'm one of those, like, especially the anything new. I don't know. I'm just weird about it. Like, I like it, but I don't know. It's a weird, it's a love-hate relationship. I love sushi. Well, fish, fish eggs, give it yeah. to me. I want uh, it all. There's certain types. Certain types. Awesome. So, pizza. 
There we go. There we go. And lastly, guys, the most important thing, tell them about your band Heart for Hire. If they don't already know already, because we're on to round three for interviews, but tell them about your band, where they find you at, and anything coming up in the next couple of months. Um, I mean, the base is social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we do have our single coming out on March 22nd. This is our first yeah. release in over two years. Um, so this is kind of a big one. It's been a long time coming. Um, I can't stress that enough, especially now having having Mike in the band, having Mike our bass player, having Brian, like we've really solidified this lineup. It's been a long time coming and we hope it was worth the wait. Um, if you're not new to Heart for Hire, if you are new to Heart for Hire, we hope you love it. Um, what do we got coming up, Mike? Um, uh, music video. Yeah, the we music talk about that yet. Drop at the yeah, single. is it okay? Yeah, cool. we uh, we wrapped up filming that um, last weekend, um, or no, we wrapped up filming the first set, like the backstory shots. We're gonna go do all the live shots next weekend. Um, yep. We're working with a gentleman by the name of Josh Nesmith. Um, we're very excited. He's awesome to work with. Um, shows are not announced right now. We are working on that. We should have a show that we're announcing pretty soon. That should be sh our first show back. Um, we're waiting for confirmation on that. Um, Keeping up with us on our socials would be the best yep. way to find out about when that comes up. So check us out. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, as most of you are familiar with the channel, Hard Fryer has been on for the third time, so I got to give them props to that. They're like, I think you guys are the second longest running band that I've had on that I've done multiple interviews with, so kudos to you for just wanting to deal with me again for the third time. <laughs> uh, but go check out Heart for Hire. I'm excited for the new single, Limits. Uh, it will be out by the time this interview comes out, so please go give it a listen. Um, go check out the music video. I'm sure they worked and their asses off on it, so definitely go give it a watch if you can. Uh, I know I'll be sharing it, so definitely go give it a watch um and if you enjoyed this interview make sure to subscribe hit that like share it goes a long way and then links will be in the description for heart for hire as per usual and thanks to mike and julie for coming on thank you thank you brandon always a pleasure coming on the show hey guys hope you enjoyed the video uh thanks for watching of course uh if you enjoy what we do make sure to go check out the other series we do we do album reviews we do band interviews and we do live videos so definitely go check that out um hit that subscribe button it really helps our channel helps us grow make sure to hit that like button as well uh go follow us on social media that's all down below we try to keep that as updated as possible we also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces